Hi, it's Richard here from the OPA Hub website with another one in our occasional series about the uh, Oracle Policy Automation uh, Control Extension JavaScript API. And this example, uh, well, first of all, congratulations if you're reading, listening to this at the end of the three posts that have discussed this example. Uh, well done for getting this far. Uh, if you're coming into the video, uh, you may be interested that in the description of this video, you can find a link to a series of posts which just discusses from an educational perspective all the different things that we discovered while going through this example. Anyway, without further ado, what is it all about? It's about a simple project with a simple goal. The project has one inferred entity uh, because I needed lots of instances. And there are only two attributes. The insult, which is a, a key or an identifier, and the text associated. So you might have uh, insult number one, which is followed by insult text of you idiot. To give it a little more context, um, the interview <laughs> involves insults proffered by somebody called Captain Haddock. Captain Haddock, you may know, is a character from the Tintin uh, cartoons. Um, if you grew up in Europe, maybe you've heard of this person. In any case, Captain Haddock has hundreds of insults, which sound really bad, but actually when you look at them, they don't mean anything at all. Um, so I've taken one letter, the letter B, and according to Wikipedia, there are 53 different insults beginning with the letter B used by Captain Haddock in the different cartoons, or graphical novels if you prefer. So this inferred inst entity is going to have 53 instances, and each of the instances will be displayed in the form of the insult followed by the insult text. If we go and have a look at our one and only uh, rule document, the Excel spreadsheet, uh, here it is. And as you can see, it's a simple spreadsheet with 53 records, 53 instances, um, so these are going to be inferred automatically when I run the uh, project simply to create 53 records and they all begin with the letter B. Okay, So these are the things that we want to display and, and this is part of the problem is, is that trying to display 53 rows in a standard entity container produces just a very very long page. Um, you know, when you go to the interview, normally 53 instances would just give you a, an enormous uh, long list with a scroll bar. So what we're aiming for is to use the entity container to create something more modern and something, well, just better dimensioned. To do that, uh, we're going to use a fairly typical design concept. Uh, this um, entity container has a um, custom property called the name X entity, and that's going to be used in our JavaScript to identify this particular uh, entity container. Let's take a look uh, at the JavaScript and what it's going to try and do. The JavaScript is going to use JS Grid. Okay, now JS Grid is a jQuery uh, UI component, very lightweight, so um, you're going to need jQuery as well for this. And what is it going to do? Well, we're going to grab a reference to our session data and pick up uh, the basically the instances of our entities then we're going to identify which of those uh, entities is the one we're looking for so the one that we're looking for we will use the entity public name whatever that might be um, and we will loop through until we find the one that has the corresponding public name. That's because when you compile, you'll find that the order of the entities changes as you add or delete entities in your project. So you can't rely on there being a fixed location for your entity. So we need to find the right one based on a unique key. And the entity ID is, uh, the entity public name is a great unique key. So all that really is about preparing the groundwork. Basically, uh, it's preparing an object which will contain all of our 53 instances. Then uh, we need to take those 53 instances and create a flattened list. So rather than having uh, a, a, a basically a, a tree with 53 nodes and leaves, we need to flatten it all out. So we've just got uh, the structure that the JS grid component is waiting for. So the second part is going to loop through our, our uh, set of 53 
uh, child entities to create a flattened list. And the flattened list will be then used in JS Grid. So the magic really starts here. Uh, we've inserted a blank div into our page and we've called JS Grid. We've called JS Grid and we've enabled sorting and paging, which is one of the big advantages of using something like this, as we'll see. The data we pass in is just the flat list of 53 records, excuse me, 53 instances that we built earlier on. The layout of the grid will contain two columns, one for the insult, 20 pixel width, and one for the insult text, 150 width. And uh, it's, it's inferred, so there's no update, and the delete simply uh, tidies up and removes it. Again, if you're interested in downloading this or you want to take it away and play with it yourself and add more detail to it or discover the process that went behind, that was behind this little exercise, uh, by all means, read the description of this video and find the link. For now, though, we're going to run debug. So let's look at the debug version. Um, notice that I've debugged this with Control F5 into a browser because um, the embedded browser doesn't always like uh, jQuery and uh, can get a little freaky, especially when doing some of the paging. So I'm going to close off the debug console, and you'll notice that the, the couple of design goals have been met. First of all, we're not scrolling using the browser to go through 53 instances. We're using a self-contained element with its own scroll bar. We have paging, which makes it much easier to scroll to go through the different elements of the list. So if I want to find the last one, the, the previous page, the first page, it's all really very good. And I can click on the uh, elements and I can sort it. So this is sorting from 53 to 1 and this is 1 to 53. Um, of course, I could, and there's the little marker, I could have implemented on click and so on, but basically this is a good framework for moving forward because I now have a robust self-contained element that handles large numbers of entities in a space-efficient way. Well, as I say, uh, this has been a long process to get here. I hope you enjoyed the educational post behind it. This is Richard saying, have a nice day.